we decided to um, walk the Camino because we walk, because we can. We, we are walkers. It's an adventure. It's a yeah. connection with the world and with yourself and with God. And... If you can't climb a mountain, climb a hill instead. The bottom line is the Camino changes every time we go over there uh, because we've changed. So I saw my dad on the Camino de Santiago in Spain. It was a Saturday morning. I had stopped in this little cafe in a village called Viaras de Arpigo, and out of nowhere, my dad just appeared by the door. It was October 9th, 2021. And the crazy thing is, dad had been dead for almost nine years. My dad was a rugged sportsman, a man's man who liked to hunt and fish and camp. Me, not so much. My dad loved the outdoors. I was quite the opposite. But that was okay because dad had other sons who took after his heart. Two strapping boys who liked to go outside and shoot things. And then there was me. You know, at times it felt like the family had achieved perfect balance and then I came along. I was loud and defiant, and I didn't feel like I was a part of anything. So when I turned 17, I rebelled. I spent the next 13 years abusing myself. It was my way of punishing Dad for being everything that I could never be. It wasn't pretty, but I did hit bottom. One afternoon during the worst hangover of my life, I stumbled into this movie called Field of Dreams. It's about a farmer who hears a voice in his cornfield that convinces him to plow over his crop and build a baseball diamond. At the end of the movie, the farmer reconnects with the ghost of his dead father. I knew this movie was my voice in the cornfield. I had to fix what was broken with my father. So I reached out for help. The hand of my father was there. I got clean and I got sober. And for the next two decades, I became a son to my dad, which is why I chose to walk the Camino de Santiago. So maybe you have questions like, what the hell is this Camino thing? The Camino is magic. I still get emotional almost four years after walking. I did a lot of research before I walked. So basically, it's a pilgrimage walk that essentially starts at your front door. It's a place where I had envisioned um, this and was still shocked when it happened. So many synchronicities. It was an adventure. I didn't have, you know, any other reason than that. Buried beneath the cathedral in Santiago de Compostela in Spain are the remains of St. James, the fourth apostle of Christ. According to legend, in the 7th century, certain shepherds were led to a field where the remains of St. James had been buried. Much like at the birth of Christ, they followed a star, hence the name Compostelae, the field of the star, which some believe is the root of Compostela. Since the 10th century, the city of Santiago de Compostela has been the final destination of a great pilgrimage called the Camino de Santiago, or Way of St. James. The Camino itself is a network of paths across Spain leading to the cathedral, and every year over half a million pilgrims or peregrinos from all over the world start out for the city on foot. Most of the people who make this 800-kilometer pilgrimage do so as a form of spiritual retreat, and a lot of them aren't Catholic or even Christian. 
In her book, The Camino, Shirley MacLaine writes that the purpose of the walk is to find one's deepest spiritual meaning and resolutions regarding conflicts in self. My dad um, had passed away and had left us some inheritance and we decided that we could best choose that by walking the Camino in raising money for breast cancer. There was something I needed to learn. It was either patience, tolerance, love, understanding of others. You do change and you do get into your inner self and start to have a connection with what's going on around you. In July of 2012, my father went into the hospital for a procedure no one wanted him to have. Something went wrong. His body became ravaged by sepsis. It took Dad 144 excruciating days to die. We buried Dad on December 21st, 2012, the day the Mayans said the world was supposed to end, which is one of the reasons I have the Mayan calendar on my backpack. When we returned home from the funeral, it dawned on me how much my dad had carried me through life. Now he couldn't carry me at all. I was reminded of that Indiana Jones movie where Indy is riding an elephant to Pancot Palace. When he reaches a point where the elephants can go no further, he casually replies, We walk from here. In 2012, I hated walking. So it's ironic that three days after we buried Dad, a movie about walking was about to change my life. In 2014, my daughter and I were watching The Way on TV. Yeah, my exposure to the uh, uh, pilgrimage was uh, after seeing a movie called The Way. I think a lot of Americans uh, get their first exposure to it from that movie. It just touched us. I'm not sure where these tears are coming from, but they're here. The Way stars Martin Sheen as Tom, a man who learns that his son Daniel was killed in a tragic accident while walking the Camino de Santiago. After traveling to France to identify the body, Tom decides to walk the Camino for Daniel, spreading his son's ashes along the way. I, I could identify with the, the movie because I lost my son when he was uh, 30 years old to pancreatic cancer. And I really didn't have closure uh, with that. that he uh, passed away in 2009 at the age of 30. The Way was written and directed by Martin Sheen's son, Emilio Estevez. On the DVD commentary, Emilio states he made the film as an excuse to walk the Camino with his dad. Emilio even has a series of cameos as the ghost of Tom's son, Daniel, who appears along the way. I watched The Way three days after Dad's funeral. That night, I woke up around 3 a.m., unable to sleep. I went out to my backyard, and I gazed at the stars. The first thing I saw was Orion. My father used to point out that constellation when I was a kid. He said you could always identify Orion by the three stars on his belt. As I stared at Orion, a shooting star flew right above his belt. Dad was calling me to walk with him. If only I didn't hate to hike. It's something, when, when they say that, you know, the Camino calls you, it, it's almost true. I mean, it, it's, and it gets into your system and it's like it's part of your soul. The most popular path to Santiago is the Camino Francis, almost 800 kilometers long. But you don't have to walk the whole 800 kilometers. You can start any place along the way. A lot of first-time pilgrims start in a village called Saria, which is only 113 kilometers from Santiago. It takes about a week to hike. Which was perfect for me. I could walk the Camino with minimal effort, Therefore, in 2018, I began my Camino in Saria. It's very early in the morning. Um, it's cold enough to see your breath, but uh, we're on our way. This must be the way. That first day started out gloriously. It already feels like I belong here. I love it. And then... I was maybe a little overconfident. I romanticized it. I might be sleeping in the rain in the middle of the forest. I want you to see what we have to go down. Discomfort, pain, and suffering. Fortunately, the Camino sent me an angel. Well, I do believe that everybody has, uh, has at least one Camino angel. This is my friend Joe. We met on the Camino. When we first met, Matt had a great heart. Uh, and he was very excited and curious about the Camino. 
uh, even though he was basically had a lack of understanding and a lack of preparation. What are the odds? And I admired his heart. That's why I, you know, passed him along a little flashlight and, and just some basic knowledge of how sort of the Camino rolled. I arrived in Santiago a week later, but my Camino had not gone well. This is ridiculous. This is stupid. Why didn't I, why did I decide to do this? This is probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. I hurt my back yesterday. The pain was so bad I was afraid I might not finish. I'm sick to my stomach. I'm really tired. Easily one of the worst nights I've ever had. I will not do this again. I will not do this again. I will not do this again. I was really sorry to hear that he had uh, the experience that he did. He didn't feel it's connected to the other pilgrims uh, like I did, um, but simply that was because he had started so much later in Saria. I was too sick and miserable to enjoy Santiago, but then I sat in the square in front of the cathedral. I watched the other hikers, people who had committed weeks of their lives to this pilgrimage. They had a level of peace and joy that I longed for. I made all the suffering worth it, and I'd do it again. Maybe I will do it again. Do it at your own pace. It's okay. It's your Camino. It might not have been exactly what you wanted, but you finished. So I've been planning, and now here I am in Pamplona. Tomorrow I start the Camino. I really don't know why, except I just know I have to. Something's telling me I have to do this again, and I'm going into it with less romance than I did last time. Last time I'd watched that movie with Martin Sheen, and I was like so romanticized by it that I'm just really kind of overwhelmed that I'm here in Pamplona. I was told by Joe that the first week on the Camino is a physical challenge, the second week is a mental challenge, and the third week is a spiritual challenge. That was how it went for me. Week one was about teaching my body to walk. I had done my training, but my body did not yet know how it felt to walk for six to eight hours a day, to experience extreme caloric deficit, to push through pain and exhaustion. I'll have you right, know right now this is brutal. I've got very little gas left in the tank. It's a rough first day. I am so tired, I can barely, I can barely stand. I am just cooked, man. Second day, I'm hitting a wall, and I was in a lot of pain last night. Still am in some pain. The fun part is that it doesn't really get any easier. By week two, the body knew what to do. It was on autopilot. That was when my mind began to fold in on itself when demons came to the surface to present me with every fear and harsh doubt I'd ever had. Feeling a lot of despair this morning. Now my mind is playing tricks on it. Making me question whether I'm good enough. I don't know, man. For no fucking reason, I'm angry. I can always tap out. Is this part of the spiritual journey? Because it fucking sucks! All I have going right now is hope, and I don't like hope. I am such a fucking idiot. Week two was when I almost quit. Somehow I didn't. Week three began with a morning of exquisite beauty, and for the next seven days I questioned everything I'd ever believed. Christians believe Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is the physical manifestation of God. Jesus is I am the way. Jesus is God. The Bible also says God is love. Therefore, the way is love. Don't know what I'm working through today. Don't have the strength to sing. Don't have the strength to laugh. I'm just unbecoming something. Maybe so I can become something else. I don't know. The first day of week four seemed to be a morning like any other. I ran into an old friend as the sun came up. Are you kidding me? Who is this up ahead? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> His name was Jonas. We had met way back in week two and it had seemed that whenever I was low or needed a boost, Jonas would magically appear. That morning was no different. We walked to a little town called Viaras de Orbigo and stopped for coffee at Bar and All. That was when everything changed. 
we stopped at this uh, town back here and I had cafe with my friend Jonas and as we're standing there this gentleman walks in and he from the side he looked just like my dad but it wasn't just his looks his mannerisms the way he walked the way he pulled his change out the way he had everything all those little things that I hold <laughs> little details that make up who my father is it turned into my best day on the Camino that older gentleman is way up ahead one that looks like dad it's kind of like I'm following dad on the Camino today the best day turned into the best week and on day 30 in the quiet Spanish town of Palastre, another miracle happened. That older gentleman is way up ahead. One that looks like Dad. It's kind of like I'm following Dad on the Camino today. That's my friend Daryl up there going up to the cash machine. Um, gonna walk with him for a little bit. He's the guy I saw the other day that looked like Dad. And as I'm walking into town, I see this shop that sells all kinds of stuff to um, to uh, pilgrims and this guy walks by and I said hello I'm looking in the window he stopped and looked in the window as I recall and we walked on and I see I think he asked me well where are you staying and I said well Casa Marcello my new friend walked with me and he walked in and checked the place out and he decided to stay there too. And uh, this is my friend over here, Daryl. We then struck up a conversation that probably went on for two hours. And we just talked about anything and everything. Uh, the, the Camino, where we came from, what we did for a living. He said, you know, we've seen each other before, probably about three, three or four days ago. In hindsight, I remember seeing him and I acknowledged him as I walked in. He told me, I looked up. And it was like I was looking at my father. He reminds me of dad. He's got stories. All you need to know is that he's 80 years old. He's walking the Camino. And I thought, now that's really interesting to have this chance, or is it chance, connection with somebody I don't know, but who sees in me something of his father who had died recently. And we meet again some days later. And I'm gonna make it easy for you. Oh, thank you, Ann. I'll stay in touch with you. The next morning, he was up, he was dressed, he was all set to go. And I thought, wait a minute, I'm not through talking with this guy. We hadn't talked long enough the night before. I mean, we just ran out of gas. I think we spent most of the rest of the day and we stopped a couple of times for coffees. It's been a real pleasure walking with Daryl. I really feel like my father sent Daryl to walk with me on the Camino. And I was gonna walk alone today and he said, I'd like to walk with you. I feel like we're in the middle of a conversation we started last night. Daryl and I parted ways at the end of that day with a promise to stay in touch. I didn't know if I would see him again, so I decided to focus on my arrival in Santiago. As you're walking into, towards Santiago, you realize that this is the last day. This is going to be the end of the trip. Today, you're a pilgrim. Tomorrow, you're going to be a tourist. And it, it was like after doing that for 33 days, um, I had some overwhelming feelings because we've We've done it. My um, boyfriend at the time had, about five years previously, asked me, if if I ask you to marry me, would you say yes? And I said, oh dear, please don't ask me to, you know I will. But the Camino gives you a lot of time to think, and one of the things that I thought about was, if he ever asked me, why would I say no? But when we got in there, both he and Carol's fiance at the time were waiting for us and after a very emotional reunion I hear this little voice but wait I've got one more thing and I turned around and he was on his knee that was June 8th in the day that my dad had passed away um, two years earlier so a sad day became a very happy day I go into town and I'm just wandering around in awe can't believe that I'm here. Um, and who do I see 
but the guys from All Push You. Patrick and Justin, that was the highlight, and I have to say the highlight of my Camino, was getting to see these guys, because talk about inspirational. It was more of a trip with my son, Ricky, uh, because uh, he was in my thoughts the entire time. And now, instead of when I think about my son, I don't think about the end anymore. Now I think about his entire span of his life. For years, I'd seen photographs on Instagram of pilgrims posing in front of the cathedral at the end of their Camino. I wanted to do something equally artistic and dramatic. And since I'd been documenting my Camino with two cameras, I thought it would be cool to film my point of view with one camera while filming my reaction with the other. I soon became so overwhelmed with emotion that I forgot the cameras were running. The reaction they captured was authentic and a little embarrassing. Oh my God, excuse me. That was my Camino. But the best part of it was, when I got up off my knees, I saw my father standing there. I got to Santiago and I went to the uh, plaza out in front of the uh, uh, cathedral and I see my new friend coming. It's like, oh my God, I'm here. I did this. Wow, this is great. And then I walked straight for him and he saw me about a hundred feet away. And it was just, ha, great experience. Great moment. Camino's magic. Yeah. We did it once, we want to go back. Then once you walk to Camino, you, there's something inside yeah. you that says, that was pretty cool, I want to do it again. Oh my God, my heart was just so warmed and filled with love. It was awesome. We all had one mission and that was to get here to Santiago. We had the best Camino. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> oh, you probably had the best. <laughs> yeah, everybody had the best Camino, the best absolutely. Camino. Everybody. It's hard to pick a best moment in my life. This one is right near the top. We're on the road to Santiago. We're on the road to find ourselves. We're on the road to Santiago. We're on the road to make things well. Every step you take, every friend you make, every time you say to yourself, this was all a mistake. Inside, there's no place to hide from all the times you've lied to yourself. So just return to the wilderness. Return to the Return to the wilderness Turn the page on the first book you've ever read Return to the wilderness Return to the wilderness Return to the wilderness Return to the wilderness